Excellent. Thank you. I would want to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's wonderful to be here, and I'm very excited to speak. Uh, so I have two goals with my talk today. I want to tell you, first goal is I want to tell you about a new technique that I've used in the, towards the Kobayashi conjecture and then on other problems about hypersurfaces and projective space. And I think it's likely, I hope that it will be useful in your problems too uh, in future. It's a, quite a general technique, and so I hope to show you how it works, and uh, hopefully someone here or someone somewhere else can uh, can use it to solve a new problem. And then the second part is, uh, it's a bit of a call to arms. Uh, the, this technique, it reduces the Kobayashi conjecture, roughly it reduces the Kobayashi conjecture to green Griffiths line conjecture. And so it's like, come on, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go after the green Griffiths line conjecture. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, there will be some overlap with my introduction with uh, Jean-Pierre's, but I think better to say it twice than to accidentally miss something. And some of our notation is slightly different. So let's let x be a complex variety. Next time, try to reduce the green Griffith line conjecture to the Kobayashi conjecture. It will be easier. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and let's uh, define it. So an entire curve. is a non-constant holomorphic map from C. And we say that x is Brody hyperbolic <coughs> if it contains no entire curves. And then here, x is algebraically hyperbolic. Algebraically. If, roughly speaking, large degree curves have to have high genus. So um, if there is some epsilon greater than 0, such that for all c and x, an algebraic curve. And uh, then 2g minus 2 is at least epsilon times the degree of c, where the degree is defined with respect to some uh, polarization. And so now I have a, a conjecture I would like to attribute to uh, Demayi, uh, but I should, I should double check with, it's someone's conjecture. And I, I, I think it's, it's, oh, I should write it before I uh, ask you if it's yours. Uh, so the conjecture is that x is algebraically hyperbolic if and only if uh, x is hyperbolic. Is, is that fair? Maybe it was done by other people before, but I, 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 I stated it in myself. Excellent, <laughs> excellent, good, good, good. Uh, so I'm safe. Uh, and so uh, uh, Jean-Pierre uh, proved this direction. So if you're hyperbolic, then it's known that you are algebraically hyperbolic. Uh, and, and it's expected slash hoped that algebraically hyperbolic implies hyperbolic. I want to talk about one other general, or well, I have several conjectures, but uh, I want to mention uh, the green Griffiths line conjecture, which I'll abbreviate GGL. Uh, so if x is general type, then there's some sub variety, a proper sub variety B and X that contains all the entire curves. And so I love hypersurfaces. And so for the rest of the talk, I'm going to focus in on the case of hypersurfaces. Uh, and so I'm going to set notation here once and for all. Let's let x be the vanishing set of a polynomial f in Pn. And uh, x will have degree d. And let's let it be very general, which means uh, in the moduli space of hypersurfaces, it's the complement of a countable union of subvarieties. Uh, a, a lot of what I say could work for general too, but it's too, I find it too annoying to have to switch between general and very general, and we're, and we're uh, 
And then, so in, here in the case of hypersurfaces, general type is equivalent to uh, D being at least n plus two. So general type, oh. so, so when I say general type, that's what I mean. And so the Kobayashi conjecture here says that if D is at least n plus two, sorry, the green griffiths line conjecture here says that D is at least n plus two, and X is a smooth hypersurface, and so for, certainly for a very general one, then there's some proper subvariety that contains all the entire curves. There's a stronger conjecture uh, called the Kobayashi conjecture. I'm going to abbreviate it conjecture K. Uh, and it says, uh, so this is, a, this is slightly different from what Jean-Pierre said, but it's certainly, certainly in the same spirit. So I'm calling the Kobayashi conjecture that if X, that D is at least 2n plus 1, then X is hyperbolic. So I'm, start, I'm calling the conjecture like the full strong, like the strong bound. Uh, and so th there's some dispute about exactly what the right bound should be, and some, particularly this constant here, there's some uh, disagreement or kerfuffle about exactly the right one. I want to um, talk about evidence for the, uh, so I'm going to present evidence for this bound. You, you might argue that you, could, you should be able to t do a 2n minus 2 for very large n, uh, and I don't have any evidence for that. Uh, so remember, we expect you to be hyperbolic if you're algebraically hyperbolic. So, uh, we, so like Jean-Pierre was saying, we should think about when are you algebraically hyperbolic. And a lot of the same results he mentioned prove algebraic hyperbolicity. So, um, oh, oops. so x is algebraically hyperbolic if, uh, so if d is at least 2n, this is a result. This follows from work of Ein. And then if d is at least 2n minus 1 and n is at least 4, this follows from work of Voisin. And then also, and I should mention Shu's name in here too. He did, he, he proved that Quintic and P3, which isn't quite covered by this, he proved that they contain no rational or elliptic curves, which is uh, not quite algebraically hyperbolic, but getting like very close. And so this was, this was in the 80s and 90s. And then it was, um, there, uh, there was that one last case, right, the Quintic surfaces. Uh, and uh, Izette and I recently, um, polished off that last case. So um, if d is at least 2n minus 1, then we know that x is algebraically hyperbolic. Um, you might say, well, what, can this be improved? And the, quest, and the answer is not for all n. So if n is 3, then uh, suppose we wanted to state the same result for 2n minus 2. Well, that's equal to 4. And so this is, a, this is a K3 surface, and it's well known that these are not algebraically hyperbolic. They have rational curves, in fact, and lots of elliptic curves. All right, so, so that, that's, that's what we expect. We, ex <coughs> we expect uh, X to be hyperbolic if D is at least 2n minus 1. Let's talk about what we know. Uh, so. Uh, I'm gonna, this is of January of 12. There's been some very fast uh, uh, new results on this, and so I'm, I'm gonna separate things that happened January of 2018 and earlier from uh, things within the last year. Uh, and so um, there, uh, there, there's been so much great work on the Green Griffiths line conjecture, even for hypersurfaces, that I, I'm gonna write a bunch of names down, and I'm sorry if I missed you, but th there are probably more names that, I, uh, that I've, uh, that I forgot. Uh, so, Durandol, uh, 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 and uh, these aren't in chronological order either, unfortunately. I, I should, well, nah, too late. Uh, and then McQuillan and Pound have work for uh, P3. And uh, the, like, uh, a particularly important result was by De Verriero, Merker, and Russo. Uh, and then uh, Demayi has um, some improvements <coughs> on their bounds, uh, and and there are more people. But the the bound the best uh, bound I know of is uh, n ugh, log n ugh, log n to the n. Oh, what? Oh, yes. Uh, sorry, I will. Uh, and so this is conjecture. Uh, Green Griffiths Lang is known for this. 
three <laughs> for this range of degrees. Is, is there anything I need to erase and rewrite? Anything else? Or is this okay? Yeah. And then I'll write bigger going forward. And then how do I? And then uh, the, Kobe, the Kobayashi conjecture um, uh, also, so, so some of the names to mention here are Su and uh, Brodbeck and Deng and uh, Demayi. And I think that's actually most of them. I think the, the results on the Kobayashi conjecture are more recent. Um, and uh, they prove conjecture K for, uh, I wrote down D at least one fifth EN to the 2N. Uh, now I've got to figure out how to use the board. Um, so then in, uh, okay, <laughs> in, <laughs> well, it wants to be here. All right, so in June of 2018, uh, uh, David Yang and I prove that a, uh, so I'll, I'll talk more about the technicalities here, but it's a, a slightly stronger form of the green griffiths line conjecture for D at least uh, D sub 2N, uh, whoops, D sub N, implies the um, the Green Griffiths the Kobayashi conjecture for D at least D 2n minus 3. So if, basically if you if you roughly half the dimension or have the dimension or double your bound on uh, no have the dimension then if you knew the Green Griffiths line conjecture then you can get the Kobayashi conjecture. And so then, so that was in June, and then uh, Merker in July of 2018, uh, and and then and then later in, uh, so he had, he had an immediately improved bound, and then in January 2019, uh, just last month, uh, so I, I won't write all the bounds because we, otherwise we'd be here all day. But uh, I'll write I'll mo write the current best one that I know, um, Merker and Ta. They they prove conject the Green Griffiths line conjecture for uh, d at least uh, square root n log n to the n, and then and then use our results to prove uh, the Kobayashi conjecture for uh, d at least n log n. You mean the yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I should I should say the the, the Green Griffiths line conjecture for a general hypersurface. Yeah. Sorry. Every, everything I say from now on is about hypersurfaces. Yes. Are, are there any questions at this point? What? Right. Let's talk a little bit about some of the proofs. Uh, uh, so first, I have to just introduce. Uh, a lot of this uh, Jean-Pierre did probably better than I'm about to, but uh, I'm going to say it again anyway. Uh, so a, a k-jet of x is a map uh, from spec uh, c adjoined epsilon mod epsilon to the k plus 1 to x. And how do I think, and so let's let jkx be the space of k jets of x. And so how do I think of these k jets? Uh, so I have my uh, entire curve C mapping to x. And so the image is going to be some entire curve here. And I have the origin here. And so I take this, it's given by a power series. Uh, and I can truncate the power series to order k. And that gives me a k jet here. And even though I started with something analytic, because I truncated my power series, then there are only finitely many terms, and I end up with something algebraic. And so the idea of the subject is, or the, the idea of the techniques on the subject are that to study the analytic thing, you study the algebraic space of jets, and you want to study conditions on the space of jets that come from a, an entire curve. 
And so, <laughs> and so how, how do we get conditions on the space of jets? Uh, well, Jean-Pierre gave uh, a lot of detail on this, and I'll, I'll, I'm mostly just going to quote the result that he said. So uh, it, was, it was by a lot of people, uh, again, probably like Bloch and then um, uh, Green and Griffiths and, uh, and uh, uh, Demailly and, and more, uh, is there's a, a vector bundle, E, K, M, TX dual twisted by minus one, uh, whose uh, sections act on the space of K jets of X. And the <coughs> this ve vector bundle has two very nice, pro or has lots of properties, but I want to focus on two particularly nice properties of these vector bundles. Uh, the first one is that they have, um, oops, they have nice functorial properties. Right, and so what do I mean by this? I mean that if you have a family of uh, varieties, then you get a family of these vector bundles. And I mean if you have an inclusion of varieties, these are like, these are the jet differential operators. And so if you have a jet differential operator on a bigger variety, you can restrict that operator to a subvariety, and it still gives you an operator. Uh, and then uh, the second property is the vanishing theorem that Jean-Pierre was saying, is that H naught of E K M T X star minus one vanishes on jets coming from entire curves. So, so if you're if you're trying to prove the Green Griffiths line conjecture or the Kobayashi conjecture, which uh, many of us in this room are, uh, then what you do is you study these equations that your um, entire curves have to satisfy, and then hope hope that you can prevent, like, show that there are none. Uh, so I want to give a, a, a rough outline of the steps to prove the Kobayashi conjecture, which unfortunately won't match very well with uh, what Jean-Pierre said, it, but it's, it's sort of a more of a historical overview of some of the major steps towards proving the Kobayashi conjecture, uh, because I want to I point out uh, where our work falls and doesn't fall. So, um, uh, whoops, to prove the Kobayashi conjecture, uh, the work sort of one one way to do it that uh, many people have taken is you first show that um, that you have these sections that e k m uh, t x star negative one is non zero right it, it does you no good to have these equations if uh, if they all vanish uh, and so so that that's step one and step two is that you analyze uh, the Analyze the sections uh, in various ways to uh, uh, show the Green Griffiths line conjecture. Which is so to show that through a general point of X, there are no entire curves, uh, which is which is a lot weaker than the Kobayashi conjecture, and it's it's much harder to control the uh, the bad locus for the Kobayashi conjecture. And then the third step is. So step one is, is difficult. Step two is even more difficult. And then step three, uh, at least it was, it was the last of the steps to happen historically. And so you have to do more work to, to show that this bad set is empty. And so uh, what I'm going to talk, this technique I'm talking about does nothing for step one and nothing for step two currently. I'm like, like you would need some very clever idea to be able to make progress on step one and step two with this technique. But we completely solve step three. And, and, and in a way so that uh, if as people make improvements on steps one and two, our, our result will immediately uh, solve step three for them. Uh, so, so again, the only, like these are the two steps left. Uh, so writing the, So we solve step three. 
let me put that up there. So now I want I want to talk about the general setting. I'm gonna so what we actually prove is a slightly more technical result, uh, and I want to. Uh, talk about why this more technical looking result is actually basically the same as, uh, or does what we claim it does. And so let's think, so we're trying to prove something for a general hypersurface. So we have, we have a, here we have our, our family of hypersurfaces, so this is the set of x. And so for each point here, we have a hypersurface. So we have a hypersurface here, and we have a hypersurface here, and a hypersurface here, where we construct the universal hypersurface. And, and for these, uh, uh, as, as we vary in this family, for this hypersurface, we have a bad locus. And for this hypersurface, we have a bad locus. And for this hypersurface, we have a bad locus. And this, this, these functoriality properties of EKM show that the bad loci sort of move together nicely in a family. There'll be a locally closed subvariety of the universal hypersurface. And so let me just uh, give some notation. So this is the bad locus. Uh, and I'm going to start giving names for these things in a second, but before I do that, I want to just talk about our goal here. Uh, no, I need to give them names first. And so, definition. Let's let u sub n d be the universal hypersurface. So it's just the set of p comma x, such that p is an x in p n. Is uh, it's a degree d hypersurface? Uh, sorry, x is a degree d hypersurface, and p is a point of x. Uh, and this maps naturally to Pn uh, just by remembering the point. And it also maps naturally to the space of hypersurfaces here. And then I want a subvariety of this universal hyper. So, so the universal hypersurface is this picture I drew with the hypersurfaces. And then the subvariety B is just the bad locus. So it's the set of um, P and X such that P is bad for X. What does it mean for p to be bad for x? It means that our uh, our uh, differential equations don't fully restrict all the um, entire curves through that point. And so the, the technical thing is that there exists a non-singular uh, uh, jet, a uh, k jet, j in x through p such that all sections of H naught of EKM ugh, TX star minus one vanish on uh, J. So we, uh, yeah, so we have this, uh, maybe I'll extend this brace too. So we have this bad locus here, which, which it's all the points where there's a where there's a bad k jet through it, uh, a k jet that we don't that could come from an entire curve, but we don't know by our differential equations like is like can't come from an entire curve. And so, what do we want to do? We would like to show if we can show that this bad locus is very small, has high codimension in U and D, then there's no way it could possibly dominate the, the moduli space of all x. It, it would be too small, and so the image here would can't possibly be dominant, and so that would mean a general x would have no bad locus, and so would have to be uh, um, would have to be hyperbolic, and so so that that's uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, yeah, so let me write that remark down. Oh, I'm breaking chalk everywhere. <laughs> uh, if b in u has high codimension. Then uh, this means that B does not dominate. The moduli space of X, which means which implies the Kobayashi conjecture. So now let me tell you the theorem that uh, David and I actually prove, and I'm going to call this theorem star so that I can refer back to it. And the theorem is not about uh, jet differentials. It's about it's just about 
universal hypersurfaces with picked out families. So uh, let's let m be a natural number. And let's let, um, for, so for every n and d, we need this, sub uh, this locally closed uh, subvariety or countably, countable union of locally closed subvarieties, s and d. So we have an integer and a bad locus, and we want them to satisfy that uh, the codimension of S M D in uh, U M D is at least one. All right. So this is saying that at some point the bad locus can't be everything. That's exactly the Green Griffiths line conjecture. <laughs> And then the second condition is, is like a naturalness or a functoriality. And it's, it's if, uh, if we have P in X0 is a linear section. Of uh, PX. And PX is, uh, um, whoops. Sorry, if, if the smaller one is in S and D. <coughs> and if it's a linear section of a bigger one, which might, which you didn't know to start with was bad, uh, then because the li linear section was bad, you know the larger one has to be bad. Uh, so then uh, PX is in S plus, is also bad. Uh, oh, and then I have to tell you the conclusion. Then uh, the co-dimension of S M minus C D and U M minus C D is at least C plus one. So, so what this is saying is if you have a family of bad subvarieties in your universal hypersurface, you know very little about this family except it's algebraic. It um, at some point, it stops being the entire universal hypersurface. And uh, any time you have a linear section uh, that's bad, then the original thing had to be bad. Then you know that starting at m, every time you chop by a hyperplane, the bad locus gets smaller. And so you can see, uh, you can see how this would be really useful. right? We're trying to bound, bound a bad locus. And so we, ju we just keep chopping by hyperplanes uh, about like n over 2 of them until the co-dimension gets so high that it's bigger than the dimension. And that's what gets the result. Uh, so just uh, saying that, or writing that a little bit more pedantically on the board, the, to see that <coughs> star implies uh, uh, the, or conjecture, uh, uh, the, that star implied the theorem that I stated earlier, right? That star, star shows that the green griffiths line conjecture implies the Kobayashi conjecture. Uh, so we just need to check conditions one and two. And uh, condition one, uh, so if we let S and D be uh, the bad locus, B and D, then condition one here, that's exactly this, this corresponds to the stronger version. of the green griffiths line conjecture. Right. <laughs> I want to say that, the, that these uh, jet differentials cut out a proper subvariety in the universal hypersurface. And that's what I, and, and so when people, currently when people prove the green griffiths line conjecture for hypersurface, says this is what they prove, the stronger version. And then to check condition two, uh, we just need to, so, so condition one is just a green griffiths line. And so condition two, Um, is exactly implied by functoriality. Of ugh, e k n or e ugh. oh no, now there are two m's. Ugh. Um, maybe, want, maybe I'll call this one n. Um, <laughs> since, uh, so, so how to, uh, maybe I'll call it R. What, uh, uh, M's not going to nod me. Uh, so 
so it, this is implied by functoriality, right? So to, let's think this through slowly. So if, uh, if we have a jet in some uh, hypersurface x0, uh, that's a linear section, uh, And, and J is not, um, so it is a non-vertical K-jet. Uh, uh, with H naught, X naught, E, K, R, T, X, ugh, this, this vector bundle. So, so I said our, our space of sections uh, vanishes on J. Right, so if we have a K jet that, um, if we have a jet J that is not restricted by these, by our differential equations, then we have, uh, we have, oh no. So then, and I'm gonna go over here. Then we, we have these uh, restriction maps. So we have, uh, well, so J was, it was, a, it was a jet on X0, but X0 is included into XK, and so that it just, in a very natural way, gives a jet of, of our bigger X. And uh, we have uh, these maps, whoops, on sections going the other way. This is an R. Right, so if we had, if all of our sections here vanish on, on J, then certainly all of the sections here had to vanish. Because if we had a section here that did not vanish on J, we would just map it back, like we would just restrict it to our X0, and then it would not vanish on the restriction. So, so this, this, uh, that slightly awkwardly stated condition two is actually very natural in our circumstance. It's saying, are, do you have a bad k-jet? And if, if your smaller hypersurface has a bad k-jet, then your larger surface will still have that, same, that exact same bad k-jet. And so, so, so yeah, so this, this shows that h naught x e k r Tx star minus one vanishes on J. And so th this means that the pair Px uh, has to be bad. And, uh, and so, so that, that's the proof. The, the, um, that theorem, uh, nope, that's someone else's very famous theorem. Uh, maybe it's way up there. I can't tell where it went. Uh, the, the theorem that uh, green Griffiths lying implies Kobayashi, it's way up there. Excellent, yeah, that, that theorem is just a formal consequence of theorem star. And you can see that theorem star is stated very, like in, in very general terms, and so if you're working, trying to work with some other property, like some other bad property, and you want to show that a very general hypersurface doesn't have it, then, uh, then you can try and use it. Um, so I want to spend the rest of the time uh, talking about the proof of the theorem because uh, even though it looks it almost because it's so general, it's the proof is short and and fairly easy because like I have I don't have any like complicated machinery floating around to use, uh, so so it, it has to be simple because uh, there, there's there's nothing to com complicate it. So so let's uh, let's do it. I first need. Oh, oh, let's go here. I first need a proposition about uh, Grassmannians. So proposition, let's let a be a subvariety of uh, 
a Grassmannian of k minus one planes, and let's let it have co-dimension. Uh, let's let's let it be non-empty and have co-dimension at least one. And then let's let C be the set of uh, k planes containing some element of A. All right, so again, the words are a little com complicated, but you just take some family of k minus 1 planes, and then you take all of the k planes that contain them. And the, the result is that there have to be more uh, k planes. So the co-dimension has to go down. And uh, the, the proof is not difficult. I'm going to, I'll, I'll write down the incidence correspondence, and then the, 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 the like very technically correct way to prove it would be to uh, do a dimension count. And I'll sort of wave my hands at the dimension count to try and argue why, uh, why, it, why it gives the thing you want. So proof. We have uh, the natural incidence correspondence I, which is the set of lambda phi, such that, so k, k minus one plane, k plane, such that your k minus one plane is contained in your k plane. And this maps to uh, the space of k minus one planes, and it maps to the space of k planes. And so here, if we take some a, of codimension epsilon. Oh, so th then we can we can take um, the subvariety here, uh, which is just it's just the set of a comma c such that a is an a and c is in or uh, a is contained in c. Right, and so we have we have our subvariety here, and we uh, we look. This maps naturally here. Uh, the fiber, if we compare the dimensions of the fibers, they're the same, right? Here, any time, any, for any point A here, you have all the C's that contain it. So fibers are co-dimension zero. And so that means that this has to be co-dimension epsilon. And now we need to look at this map down. So we, we, the map down, we have uh, pairs A, C, and we want to so it, we map down to C. We have these pairs, and we want to know, uh, given a pair, like for a given C here, what's the fiber? It's just all the A contained in it. I claim that that can't possibly be all the K minus one planes in C. It has to be at least one dimension fewer. So I, I, I'll draw a picture to try and argue that. But so here the codimension has to be at least one, and that implies that the codimension here is at most epsilon minus one. And uh, let, me, uh, let me just draw a picture to try and argue why that, why that last fiber dimension had to be at least one. So if, if, if this were also co-dimension zero, then you would have that, what we would say is that you have A's and C's, and every A is contained in some C, and every C is, like every time you have an A, like a C containing an A, then C is in C. And every time you have an A contained in a C, then A is an A. And so what you do is you just you start with two elements of your C, and, uh, and then you, you connect them by a, by a chain of subvarieties, or a, a chain of planes where each, each one is a k minus one plane in the other. And then if this started out in C, then this was an A, so this was in C, so this was an A, so this was in C, so this was an A, so this is in C. And, and that's... Uh, and so that's why the fibers have to be at least co-dimension one. It, it's a little hard to do on the board, uh, and then, but it's, it's not a hard statement, and it's not a technical proof. And so now I want to I want to explain how, given this proposition, I can I can prove our main theorem. Uh, and so I'm I'm going to do. Oh, let's see. Now I have to figure out how to use these boards again. No, wrong one. So 
I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the proof modulo two lies, and then I'm going to I'm going to tell you what the two lies were. Uh, <coughs> they don't they don't seriously add to the difficulty, but they again add to just the amount of notation and like symbols on the board. And I think I would it's better to like be able this this is about like looking at it right, and once you look at it right, then it's clear, and then it's not so hard to fill in the details. So let's do the idea of the proof. So the idea is you take some enormous hypersurface, Y, and some gigantic uh, PN. Uh, and you can tell it's big because it's a capital letter. Uh, and we're going to let um, it's going to have degree D, and capital N is going to be much bigger than 0. And, it's, and what, let, let's suppose for a second uh, this is this is one of the lies, but uh, it's not so hard to fix. But so this is uh, I've got to draw a bigger Y here. Here's Y, and we have a point here. And suppose that Y is so big that for some n, um, ah, I need one more piece of notation, which I have right here. Let's let G sub n n sub p be the set of n planes through p. And so we, we picked our y that's so big so that we, so given we have a natural map for any y, we have a natural map from the space, I guess, the, from the space of hyper, uh, n planes through p. We can just take an n-plane through p, and we can intersect it with y, and then we get a map to uh, um, u and d. And so what we're going to assume is that, so you, you get this map. We're going to assume that this map is surjective, which isn't, uh, uh, you can't quite do that. Uh, you, there, you, there needs to be a fix. Uh, but th that's roughly the idea. Uh, and, uh, and the map is just you take an n-plane, and you send it to the pair p y intersect this n-plane. And so uh, suppose to get a contradiction that uh, sm minus c in um minus c um, has codimension at most c, smaller than what we want. So suppose that this bad locus was uh, too big. Then, oh, I need a name for this map. This is going to be alpha n. I need to rescue the board from the top. And so, so we have this map from uh, the Grassmannians of, of planes through, N, through P to uh, the, the space of points, point comma hypersurface. Uh, so, and we've assumed that this S M C N minus C is too big. So let, what we should do, is we, our lemma is about, or our proposition is about uh, Grassmannians, right? So we should try and get Grassmannians in, the, in somehow. So let's pull back S M minus C by our alpha N, or alpha M minus C, rather. So um, if we take the preimage of SM minus C, I'll need some more board. Then uh, when, when you take a preimage like that, the codimension uh, can't go up. right? The, this SM minus C is uh, um, <coughs> uh, it's generically colon Macaulay, so it's generically cut out by however many equations, and then when you pull it back, you have just the same equations cutting it, cutting it out. So the codimension could go down, but it can't go up. So, so this in, uh, um, in the Grassmannian 
has co-dimension at most c. Let's let this be a from our proposition. It's a subvariety of of a Grassmannian. Now, uh, so then, what is uh, c? It's just all the um, n plus one or the m minus c plus one planes containing one of these things. Though that will certainly be contained in the preimage of the bad locus one dimension up by by property two. So, so this means that if we take alpha m minus c plus one inverse of s m minus c plus one d, then in uh, the Grassmannian of m minus c plus one planes, this has co-dimension smaller, so at most c minus one. We're getting, we're, we're, this takes the place of our a, and this, I'm, I'm claiming it takes the place of our c. It, it actually could contain c, but if, if you have it even bigger, it makes it even worse. <laughs> Well, and now we run the argument again, right? We let this be our A, and we look at all the n, m minus c plus two planes containing it. Uh, and so then our co-dimension has to go down yet again, and we do it again and again. And so eventually we get to alpha m inverse of s m d. And we've we've gone uh, enough steps so that this has to be co-dimension at most zero, uh, which contradicts one, and that's it. Uh, so I, I, I told, and and that that is those are the essential ideas. I told you I told a couple of lies. Uh, so let me. Uh, let me give a couple, just hint at uh, like a, cu a couple of things, like small things you would have to fix to uh, to get the real uh, to get uh, a fully correct proof. And so, the first one is that um, uh, he, this map alpha, which was yeah. all the way up there, it, um, it it's that's technically only defined up to automorphism on our m n plane. So you need to pick coordinates on your Grassmannian. So uh, I mean it's it's no serious obstacle, but you have to work with uh, parameterized n planes instead of uh, instead of just the Grassmannian. But but all the like you just add a parameterization, and all the same limits are still true. And then the second thing you have to work around is that alpha n is not necessarily surjective. And but so how do you figure? How do you work on this? You, but all we need to do is we need to work locally around. Like we want to show that locally around uh, general points of components that um, that s has the right dimension. And so we just uh, um, so you work locally. Around uh, a uh, p x zero in S N D, and so you, you pick you pick the point you want to work locally around, and then you pick your y to be big enough so that it has that point as a section and has a has like a good point as a section, which you know exists by uh, by hypothesis, and then and then you run the same argument. But I think I think it's just a, it's too confusing to think about it on the board uh, with all of the same things. Are there any questions here? That, that, was, that was the main technique. I have a couple last comments, but uh, that was what I wanted to get across. All right. <laughs> so I, I, I hinted, so the, the, I think the implications about the Kobayashi conjecture are clear. If you want to prove the Kobayashi conjecture, you go after the Green-Griffiths line conjecture, and, and, and that's simple. I want to give some ideas of a couple other instances where this technique uh, has been useful uh, and uh, to hopefully give you some ideas of other place other places I, I think I think it works best for hypersurfaces or complete intersections I don't know of a way to get around that but uh, there, there are lots of different types of properties of them you may want to study with uh, with this result <laughs> uh, 
And so a couple of other uses. Um, you can, uh, it's a good way to restrict subvarieties of hypersurfaces. So David Yang and I proved that if you have a uh, very general, so suppose you give me a family of varieties and you give me a dimension of hypersurface and then I can pick a degree large enough so that um, my uh, very general hypersurface of that degree contains no varieties from your family. So large degree hypersurfaces and like avoid any, uh, any particular family of varieties that you want. Uh, Another use, you can, you can use it to restrict rational curves in the space of lines of x. Uh, so th this is uh, um, probably not a variety uh, many of you are used to thinking about if you're used to thinking about the Kobayashi conjecture because uh, d is very large. But when d gets a little bit smaller, you start having these subvarieties, uh, like you start having lines on your hypersurface. And it, for your, the green griffiths line conjecture, the lines certainly have to be in the bad locus uh, because lines have uh, lots of entire curves. Uh, but uh, so Dave, if you look at the space of lines, the space swept out, David Yang and I proved for um, d at least about 3 n over 2. There are no other rational curves in that locus. So it's the lines, but nothing else. Somehow, like having the lines like, has soaked up all of the positivity possible. Uh, and uh, the rest of it is very positive. Uh, another application is we think about uh, Chow zero of hypersurfaces. Uh, so th this is the group of uh, zero cycles on the hypersurface up to rational equivalence. Uh, and it's a uh, conjecture of either of Wazan or Chen, Lewis, and Cheng, depending on uh, which paper you look at. Uh, and uh, they, uh, uh, that um, you can say, say precisely how many points on your hypersurface can be equivalent to each other. Uh, and uh, we, uh, this technique just sort of almost immediately gives uh, all but one cases of that conjecture. And uh, so one, the one case was done in a difficult paper by Chen, Lewis, and Cheng. The, the large degree cases had been done by Voisin, and then the smaller degree cases were open. And so we, we just uh, we completely finished off that conjecture. That was actually our original motivation for looking at this technique and this generality. And the, the Kobayashi stuff was almost a bonus. <coughs> Uh, and then uh, the last application, which is uh, more connected to what people uh, uh, here, here think about, is if you think, um, if you think about complete intersections with ample cotangent bundle. Uh, it's, it's a conjecture of Debar that uh, if you have, um, I don't have, I will state the conjecture of Debar, but I won't, I, I don't know, I'll say that there have been some results, but I won't write them down uh, so that I can end on time. Uh, so we, we have complete intersection. So it's a conjecture of Debar that if you take a complete intersection in projective space of half the dimension, uh, of where the co-dimension is equal to the dimension, then, and the degrees are large enough, then uh, you will, uh, then your hyper, your cotangent bundle of that complete intersection will be ample. And it's, and it's um, uh, Brodbeck and Sia at about the same time had like, proved it just uh, not, very, not very long ago. Uh, I, do you remember the year? <laughs> uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, but, but the bounds they, they got were, um, were large. It, like the degree had to be at least like n to the n squared or something. Uh, and so if you're trying to bring the, the bound down, we, we have to sacrifice some, we don't get the full strength of the result uh, in terms of co-dimension, but we, uh, we, we get a better bound on degree. We get a polynomial bound on degree if you, if you as long as you assume that the co-dimension has to be at least twice, no, no. Yeah, co-dimension has to be at least twice the dimension instead of at least the dimension. Uh, so let me write down the conjecture. Uh, and so if x in Pn is a very general n-dimensional uh, complete intersection of type d1 up to dc with uh, c at least n and uh, di much greater than zero, 
then for all i, oh, sorry, for all i, then uh, omega x is ample. I'm going to stop there because I don't have time. Uh, thank you. So, any questions or comments or remark? Um, how specific is uh, related to PN this? I mean, can you use for flag varieties or something? It, uh, it's uh, for a flag variety. I'm not sure. We haven't we haven't thought about it. What you what you need to uh, like th this Grassmannian lemma, you would need to recover for flight varieties, and then the other, but like maybe you could, and then the other important property. I, it, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to prove it and then uh, talk at the same time. It's a bad idea. Yeah, so you need to you need to uh, recover uh, that lemma, and then you'd also need to. Um, it's important to the proof that given two pointed hypersurfaces, I can find a third one, like a big dimensional one, which um, where the two smaller ones are linear sections of it. And so you would also need to prove that for flag varieties. But I mean, it doesn't sound out of the question. It's, yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Other questions? Maybe one. Uh, wait, wait, please. Did you try to get some degree bounds on the on the bad loss i in the uh, in the moduli spaces? Uh, if you know de uh, degrees for for Green -Griff, the generic uh, Green Griffiths line conjecture, can you get a degree for for uh, Kobayashi conjecture? Yeah, I should have said that. Uh, if you assume the so oh, I've erased it. If you assume the optimal Green Griffiths line of d at least n plus two. Then you get d at least n, two n minus one for the combination. No, no, I, I don't mean what? the degree of the. Um, I mean the the degree of the bad locus. The uh, degree and, of the bad locus. And, uh, of course, it's going to be something uh, terrible. Oh, uh, absolutely huge. But but since you construct the bad locus for the Kovacs conjecture from a number of geometric constructions starting yeah. from the uh, the Green Griffiths line conjecture, there should be some relation. Uh, in terms of degrees, maybe. Yeah, I haven't thought about that at all. I have no idea. Yeah. That's a good question. Other questions? OK, so thanks again. Thank